All right, everyone, we are back with some more Rome 2 on a nice 4v4 from one of Joe's streams, where I have brought my favorite addressing army. Joe's brought Lusitani, and we are <laughs> and we are very unsuited for her defense, that is for sure. As such, let's get into the army comps, see what's going on. I think we'll start with the defenders this time. Let's start with Joe. Lusitani over here. He's got himself a Lusitani general, a noble general, two Iberian cavalry, which are right over there. Uh, we also have two Balearic slingers, two Iberian slingers, one guerrilla warrior, three Lusitani swordsmen, and seven veteran shield warriors. Of course, the guerrilla warrior is in a very interesting location. I like it here. Kind of sits at the edge. Sneak its way in if they're lucky. We'll see how lucky they are. Next up, we'll talk about the army mostly next to him, which is Rome, brought to us by Legio 22. He's got himself a Legatus general, three auxiliary Syrian archers, one Velate, uh, seven Hestadi, seven legionary cohort, and one veteran legionnaire. Uh, I am up next. In the middle, best place for a squishy army that does not, uh, cannot sit well, uh, to be. Mostly it's just three Foxmen up top, and then I'm interspersed kind of around, as you can see, in the back lines to plug up any gaps, hit where I can. But I've got two Thracian nobles sitting over here, Gold Chevron. Uh, have two Thracian bowmen, two Thracian slingers, three Foxmen, and seven Thracian warriors. Pretty nasty army. Pretty squishy army, just like Lusitani's. A lot of veterans, a lot of Thracians. We'll see how we do. Next up, uh, last but certainly not least, is Toaster Crumbs. He's brought himself an Abatea. He's got himself a Reckham Palamgar Palace Guard General. A Nabataean Noble Cavalry, however, not a General. Uh, there it is. He's also got three Nabataean Heavy Archers. Five armored desert hoplit, one desert levy, two desert pikes, and four Nabataean axe warriors. On the attack, let's start over here with Galatia. Galatia is brought to us by Mr. Olive Tree. He's got himself a noble horse general, uh, one mercenary Cappadocian cav, one fixed ballista. Three mercenary Syrian archers, seven Galatian legionnaires, three Galatian swords, and two levy freemen. Next up, we have Seleucid, brought to us by Ghost King 87. He's got himself an Agima cavalry general, four Syrian archers, two hillmen, seven thorax swords, and five Thoreo spears. Tied up together, let's start with our Averni, brought to us by Propane. Three O Sworn, including his general, one fixed ballista, four Gallic hunters, two cho two Celtic warriors, five chosen swords, and four levy freemen. A very heavily armored barbarian faction, just like Rome. Uh, that is just meant to grind away. It works very well paired with this Kush army, brought to us by Anoris. It's actually the one that I am terrified of the most, always whenever I see it, though he has not brought it in a while. He's got himself a Royal Cushite Archer General, three regular Cushite Archers, uh, which you can't see, four Cushite Slave Infantry, one regular Slave Infantry, and seven Disciples of a Piedmac. He went very high damaging, low armor as well. So, uh, <laughs> let's just say uh, those fights are going to be over fast, and they are dangerous. If you've never seen a Disciple of a Piedmac, uh, they've got a few things with them. First, they scare, which is annoying. They also have uh, Headhunt and Frenzy, which means they are very dangerous for the price. And the fact that he could bring seven of them and still have enough for like a pretty s decent army, a decent amount of slaves, which are the push-up force, and then four archers. It's going to work really good in conjunction with Averni. But with that, that is the army comps out of the way. Let's get into the battlefield and see how it goes. Guards, now! 
Courage! We can hold these walls if we do not falter. We must not abandon our defenses. There is nowhere to run. The streets would run red. I'm assuming they say the streets would run red with civilians' blood, but who knows what they're saying anymore? Because it got cut off again. All right, let's take a look. Early up, we got, of course, some forces moving up, hitting those uh, tortoises in. Nebuti is trying to break that uh, tortoise. It's going to waste a lot of ammo, but he might be able to. Over here, our cavalry is still waiting. Got a pretty nice contingent in the inner keep. Cyrene, of course, being an inner keep battle. Uh, we try to keep most of our forces outside of there. Uh, Rome and Nabati are pretty much the only ones with their forces. And then pretty much, uh, Joe and I are under a rule that we're not going to go into the inner keep pretty much. I am hoping for, to be honest, a push down this walkway. Because if a heavy push comes down this walkway, I can actually maneuver my troops into here. And actually break them there while sending other troops this way. However... Majority of my forces at the moment are positioned up top to help Nabatea in case he needs help. Or positioned so they can. So, Falksman in the middle, these guys by the stairs. And of course, they can just support any position that's needed, and these guys even closer. My artillery is pretty much almost taken out their enemy artillery. I think I pretty much give up after they hit. I'm like, yeah, he's already running. If that's the second hit. Alright, we got some swordswomen making their way out. Forcing the slaves back. And of course, retreating in now. I decided to give a parting shot to the giant ballista crew. Just for the fun of it. Then just start blasting the Kushites. Because once this goes... Boop. There goes my guy. But on top of that, uh, Kush and the Mixus Lucid are getting ready to push here. We've got some armored desert hoplite ready to take on some hailmen. We have a desert levy in the center. Double silver chevron. Man, who would over chevron their troops? Gosh, that's wild. You can see even here, our, uh, Joe's got a little bit of an ambush planned on that corner. Enough men that they are going to actually be forced to pull back. These Celtic warriors are moving up. Slave infantry less dangerous, but it is definitely the mix here. My Falksmen still are not visible, luckily. There's a levy out going out to make an engagement with the levies. Actually doing a pretty good job. I think he's hoping to draw out some of that uh, javelin volleys, which he might get. We'll see. Or Kush might just charge him in the back. But he, they are winning this fight pretty handily. Not even pretty handily. Eh, fairly handily. For low tier versus low tier. Kushite slaves now getting into the Hestadi. I mean, the Hestadi are going to have the time of their life. Forces moving out to the middle. Stadi holding back the levees. And we already have some swordswomen moving up and up. Can't really push on out without these Celtics getting here. What are they going to do? They're attacking the slaves. Yep, and there comes the... Okay, they actually do try to charge. And they do get the charge. Not a javelin volley, but let's see how many kills they do end up getting. Getting a good amount of kills thanks to that charge bonus. So let's see. They're down to 137. That's going to be the end of them. A little bit aggressive. My Foxman getting on into them in the flank, trying to cut down these guys as they can. And here come the Kushite archers. Moving into view from their stealth. Get 
Almost at 60 kills, yep, and immediately starting to fire on the Foxman, because why not? These guys are monsters. Over here, the second unit is getting ready to maneuver. Yeah. Those Desert Levy end up getting uh, taken out with a rear charge. 91 kills, I might have used the Javelins. Levy Freeman pretty neutered there. Ah. That unit's able to move away, up to 68 kills. Velatez and now my Slingers are joining this fight. And they're gone. Boxman also getting just into the flank, so these uh, Axe Warriors are going to get the position to turn around with the... Nut with the uh, other unit of Foxman being able to move back up. Yeah, more fire into these guys. Kush is taking no chances with the Foxman because even with their numbers they can trade fairly well. As you can see, breaking two units of those Hillmen. Bring up those uh, axe warriors to go through. And just trying to mess with them. Pull them back immediately, though. Oh, could be a pretty good engagement. It's not what I'm going to win with those archers moving up. And already taken fire again. But oh, right into there, already 15 kills. Let's see how the left is going. The Stadi are starting to drop, as you can see, but the second row of his Stadi is already there. They're doing javelins in. 127 kills, pretty good volleys. They are taking a lot of uh, ammo. Obviously pulling back. That's a disciple of a Piedmac. Twenty-seven kills on those Foxmen there. And these guys are now going to be going up here, cutting their, trying to cut their way through the Kushites. It's not the job you really want them to be doing, but to stop them for a second, that's fine. These mercenaries are trying to get in, but yeah, immediately starting to get cut down. All of them starting to shoot at that. Yeah, look at that number drop. Now there's a Galatian hunter, <laughs> Gallic hunter joining in the fun. I don't even think they get a charge off, sadly. Just sad they could have got over 100 kills. Last Falksman pushing back at 53. That one, of course, shattering as well at 59. All right, over here, disciples of Piedmac. I mean, Lusitani swordswomen and a mix of Estadi are trying to cut through that. That's a headhunt placed. Ooh boy, they're already at 119 kills. Initially frenzied in. Good, nice little volley with the Velites. They're going to drop down those Disciples. There, I got 141 kills. And that's what you can expect with Disciple armies. They are terrifying. But the gate has been initially claimed, so it is looking good for my strategy, which is these guys pull back, and I go through near the late. But I am sending some troops around to get ready to help. Thracian bowmen here so they can fire over the hill in case it's needed. Fox is, of course, getting into that fight. Into those Galatian Legionnaires. And a pullback. Luckily managing to dodge most of those shots, because that could have been very dangerous up front. Letting them get a volley in, and as the Galatian Legionnaires charge... Boop. Boop. 
course, those mercenary foxes are just guided to getting shots. So they're going to end up losing this fight. And they're going to lose that prolonged engagement anyways. But those legionnaires are down to 58 men, so that's a win in my book. I hope they get 100. Let's see. No, they don't. None of the foxmen getting over 100 kills, sadly. Swordswomen being pushed back. They're at 130 kills. That's impressive. Bastadi here. Fairly healthy, but I don't think they have any javelins. Oh, they do still have javelins left. Nice. Those are Chosens versus Astadi. Sadly, the Chosen are going to be winning this fight. More of the Disciples starting to form their way in. Including that exhausted one. Down to 45 men. 185 kills. Shield Warriors sitting in the corner. They're at 222 kills. They actually got a Gallic Hunter. Holy cow. That tried to be sneaky. Oh, that unit just became noticed for a second, but disappeared. Hopefully they stay unnoticed. That Gallic Hunter's neutered whether or not it survives or not, which it does not. Into the center here. Disciple, 200 kills. It's the Exhausted one. They just sent that in. They set a Chosen Sword to back it up, but... Dude, that was like 40 or 50 more kills. And still not gone. Like, these Disciples are carving through, and this is going to become very dangerous as more... And more start to form in. Kushite Slaves... And to be perfectly honest, I'm not charging in because these Seleucids are... ...being so kind to me. Follow. 261, great job with those veterans at the very least. Yeah, just... <sighs> Siberians are trying to... F I don't know if they're trying to fight back or not. They should be. Who knows? Issue is this center is not looking very healthy. Uh, there's a pretty much only a study here. We're like, where are the big troops? Some of the legionary cohort are a bit far back. And I might have to be forced to send in Thracian warriors pretty early. Armored Desert Hoplite pretty much drop in there. Almost, they don't have many kills. My Thracian is just there to pressure. I have no real good engagement because that is <laughs> six units of ranged that I don't want to deal with. Back on this flank. Disciples, new unit of Disciples still going in. Cutting through. I mean, massive archers there. The Stadi going to be cut down. They're already at 100 kills. Over here, the first unit of Chosen is getting ready to break. That's But so is that his Stadi at 204 kills. Well, this center is not looking very healthy. This is going to force a pullback very, very soon. Veteran Shears forced in even during a headhunt. Oh, that's not good. Another unit of Disciples were able to get properly in. Battle Rhythm popped on that guy. Pretty decent job against the Kushite Archers. They are very lightly armored. Though those Syrians probably... Could have done some real damage on the engagement. Uh, he's pulling them back. Just out of caution. He might not have won. Especially against his four against two. He probably wouldn't have. But. Stadi's still managing to barely hold. But. 
Soon this corridor is going to be taken. There's literally a veteran shield warrior against two disciples right now. Over there we got some more Galatian swords. This fight, of course, yeah, they're immediately shooting the Thracians, so I gotta pull back. Because apparently they hate my Thracians, and they will immediately shoot them. So I go to scare him. I, I basically go to scare him, try to pretend to get outside, force him to maneuver away. Because of those guys. And are able to get back in. Yeah. This is not going well for Joe and me. Uh, we are getting uh, overwhelmed by ranged. Yeah, you can see those veterans are starting to drop. One thing that can be done is just kind of like a maneuver, increase the wi widen this uh, zone out is what the attackers probably want to do. Force us to commit more resources. However, Joe has taken advantage of that to hopefully get a side charge, if not a side volley in. He might not be able to get the volley, he just needs to... Oh, there he goes. Those archers are moving up. Very close. So if the Slingers want to take advantage, this is the moment. Disciples losing that fight, but the Veteran Shields are losing the combat as well. Yeah, great job with the Kushite Archers, to be perfectly honest. They've been do doing excellent work. Keeping the Balearics and the Iberians back, forcing them to lose the engagement. These things are just doing what they can wherever. And as these guys retreat, it's going to be my Thracians that uh, might be making the next plunge soon. But a kill, bit of a kill box against the Zosworn. However, they realize that and pull back, though. Slings into the back, doing a little bit of damage. Ooh, that's not going to be pretty. Great job with the Norris again. More Disciples crushing. So I'm hoping for my engagement to go well. Either force them to engage in this zone or me being able to flank around, especially with those troops being down there. We are good. What I'm doing is something a little bold. Knowing that I'm going to take damage, I want to try to hit these Disciples. Try to knock them off the field, because they are far more expensive than my boys. If I can properly knock these off the field, then I'm good. And off the charge, I mean, I'm losing a lot. I'm also taking a lot of arrows, but... I traded very well into that Disciple. 21 kills on the charge against a unit that's almost double my price. Sadly, uh, the force was held up, and they're immediately gone. Yeah. Slingers back into the fight, doing what they can to help. We now have proper legionary cohort coming into here. Against the Chosen Swords. Over here, that Osworn is just going to munch through that. So it looks like the center, sadly, not the, this corner, I wish he didn't charge in there and kind of defend it back here, is going to be the big moment. We also, though there was a little bit of a little 
push out there. Uh, do not commit. The uh, Iberian units are actually still in the city. My archers are now out of ammo. They're just sitting there just to be a nuisance, hoping that people would fire at them, but Nabataean archers are losing this fight. Now they're trying to shoot my Thracians. Goddamn monsters. But the Osworn and Chosen have broken through the center here now. And while this is going to get very dangerous very fast. Glad that they were forced to use Diwali there. Over here, the Legionnaires are still trying to fight. They're at 50 kills. Those Disciples are dropping now. Getting more ranged against these Thracian warriors, man. Initial charge. Yeah, look at that. Thirty on the charge, and they're so weak. They're such uh, cheap units. Of course, as this engagement goes through, right into the flank they go. Stopped up. Now flipped around, and the Osworn are in a perfect position to be cut down. And as they chase, another unit right on in. Right into those host one again. But Disciples are going to be able to get a great charge against me. I have to hit the levees, try to break them. Don't know how I'm losing that combat. Yeah, there we go. And engage into the flank with this as they overchase again and surround. This is pro probably the only engagement I'm kind of going to like this whole game. Uh, as uh, sadly, there's too much range, but other than that, yeah, my Thracian slingers are targeting the uh, Galax in their own right. Trying to get into this healthy unit of Osworn. I'll get caught up uh, on these weaker ones, but there we go. Got the charge. Look at that. Almost killed 20 Osworn off of the charge. Just continue to just... Punch, and that's one Osworn down, and we're aiming for the second Osworn now. Over here, more Legionnaires and Veterans are just holding up that push. And as such, yeah, bring out the other th Slinger. There it is. Get that ready. Up to 103 kills, doing what it can. This unit of Thracians trying to just stop these Disciples. And they're killing a lot, but we're killing a lot too. That's what I mean by like these engagements are just going to go fast. Trying to break this last Osworn. Drop it under 100 is what I'm hoping. New to the units for when they go there, but this is going to be pretty much the end of my Thracian warrior spam. Our uh, cavalry's still there. Yep. Last charge. First unit slingers just charging on in because they're out of ammo. And the Osworn at least is down to 74 kill. 74. They've killed a lot of low tier, but that's pretty much two of the three Osworn out, and that is really big for us. 
Because those Oathsworn will tear through the Legionnaires and the more defensive Nabatea, which is what we're worried about. And they will pose a real threat to my nobles. Iberians being forced back again. But here in the center. Yeah. It's going a lot better for us right here on the or I mean on the left hand side. A lot better for us. It looks like they have put a lot of their strength into pushing here. Down the center is where a lot of their strength is. Seleucid and uh To be honest, Seleucid uh grinding here to no effect. They are eventually breaking through, but this is been far very painful for both Seleucid and Galatia. I mean they still got the Legionnaires coming in. But great job for Rome for holding this corridor, managing to cut through a lot of these guys. And I'm trying not to run them this way because I know the archers there are going to shoot the shit out of my nobles. And we need more support in the center, so that's where that's these guys are going to go. Because the last Osworn is there. I'm trying to hold back this Osworn with just bodies. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna love their life because they're gonna kill all these without issue. But we're gonna luckily get a legionary cohort there in time. But Nabatee is pretty much. I would say they're out of men, but they still got those Desert Pikemen in the Wreckham. They could have used that up there. Kind of just kept them at bay for a little longer, but fair enough. Yeah, Legio didn't notice too much, and he almost got his archer killed. Which would have been a big downside. Javelins. And those Osworn are going to be cut down to the last men here. Though they're going to make it painful on the way out. Especially with a head hump popped. But we have a desert hoplite getting ready to flank them behind. Get ready to turn around. You can already see Nabatea pulling away. As this prop force is now being held there. Those disciples, 74 kills. I mean, that's 74 kills pretty much against veterans. And getting shot. Yeah, those veterans are pretty much beleaguered. Legionnaire able to get in and just finish them off. That Oathsworn is losing now. Then again, both sides are losing that combat. <laughs> yeah, that Oathsworn needs to break soon. So these guys can turn around. Armor Desert Hoplite holding the base of that tower. But Nobles moving up, doing what they can. Great charge with those Disciples. They're tearing into that weakened Legionnaire. I'm assuming, yeah, the Disciples are just trying to get into these Legionnaires. Carve what they can out. Especially with the way this one breaks. This is actually a big play for the attackers. And very, very dangerous for us. Like, if we do not... Like, he's he might lose two full units of Legionary Cohort. And we are going to be out of infantry. Charge does get stopped. Ah, there it goes. Right into those Velites. Over here, my Slingers are still just trying to, you know, engage everything they can. Hitting the Disciples and the Galax. With this, Luke, it has definitely taken the, uh, the corridor, but they are not looking healthy. And now that that's there, the Rome artillery can now fire on these guys. Yeah. This corner is looking beleaguered on both sides, for sure. Those slingers going. These Thracian nobles here are going to get ready to support on this side as 
As they're down to the last Legionnaire, they're going to try to run. And they're going to be allowed to escape. Over here, the cohort are going to do what they can. I'm getting ready with my nobles. Issue is, is this is earlier than I would like to get involved because there's still, as you can see, a lot of ranged, especially with the Syrians moving up. But no point in delaying. Osworn are almost did engage. They are being forced back. Great coordination on the enemies. They are able to uh, just coordinate to hit me. Send in a weakened unit that blunts my charge. Yeah. Galatian Legionnaires try to get in. They're basically not letting me engage. Which is the right move to do. But Galatia is committed to the engagement in. And I'm able to get into them with a proper charge with Headhunt on. And even with me dying to arrows. I'm already up past 60 kills. Yeah, 70 kills. Another charge in. Already past a, about to be past a hundred. Another charge as they try to charge me. Yep, over a hundred kills. These engagements are great for me as long as I can keep staying in melee combat. That's where I want to be, especially being able to continually charge like this. Yeah. The other side, yeah, it's literally just a legionary cohort holding here, they, but they just don't have the men to push down this corridor. Because they are committing most of their engagement to here. To that point, and Seleucid is engaging most of his over onto here. Are we going? Legionary cohort holding out against two Thorax, especially with the arrow tower support. Another legionary cohort behind it. With this, they were able to break through the first batch. Hundred disciples left. Holy cow! One hundred and six kills. My general's gonna have to start moving over, and they're gonna continue to commit to that center, as you can see, leaving really just a Threo spear behind. Everything ranged, infantry are all basically moving into this corner piece. Disciples coming in. I mean, I'm going to get shot, but I have to do it. Get the disciples on that charge. And I just need to continue to engage. I need to take down these Disciples before they do any real damage. And they're still doing real damage to those Legionnaires. But the other Legionnaires are in. I'm pulling out. 30 kills on that. Yeah. Uh, painful retreat, but it had to be done. Here, Cavalry actually managed to break through the Thin Thoreos line. The Noble Cavalry got stuck up. But, a great maneuver here. Enemy cavalry trying to get in to carve them off a Gima, but what I love about the Iberian cavalry, though they did add a frenzy charge to break through, some of the fastest cavalry in the game. Light cavalry, huge melee stats, right into the back. They're going to keep the engagement going up to 25. Get right into those Lucid Archers. 27. They are losing men there. Noble Cor Cav taking a far little maneuver. 
Yeah, they're going down at 30, but they're causing havoc in the back lines, which gave me the opportunity to engage for a second. All my stats are popped. I just have to hold. Which, again, is not their strong point, as you can kind of see. Yep, and you can already see them pulling away. And I'm going to just have to chase. There's no escape from this point. And I'm not doing well in that engagement now. Ooh, down to 40 men. Eighty six, eighty nine. And Noble Cap get in. Managing to break right through. Ooh, am I gonna make it to hundred? Three kills. That's all I need. No. Just shy. But over here, Nabatia has actually managed to break the assault. Almost yeah, you can see. So Lucid is pretty much gone out of here. He has moved most of his forces down to the center as well. But this is probably our greatest play as the defenders right here. Actually, this noble Nabatee Noble Cav breaking through, killing so many in the range that some of which still had a decent amount of ammo. Some of these Syrian archers. The Galax, less so. I know the Kushite was out. 266. Yeah, they were definitely out. But some of these Syrians were, were, were on their way out. And weakening them like this was a big thing. Yeah, weakening them did a lot for us. And that's probably our biggest point there. Might actually save us the day. Because as 22 minutes go in, they have a lot more than us. And they still have those Syrian archers. Very, very full of ammo. As this legionary cohort breaks. Gets ready to break, I should say. Beer and Cav in the fight trying to support the Lusitani noble. So hopefully going to put up a bit of a better, better fight. But he's trying to hold back the cavalry there. Which I think he's doing a pretty good job of. Over there, Thoreos are just chasing. Weakened Dina the Disciples is just also trying to just absorb as much ammo as possible. Sarchers need to pull back. Now they're out of ammo. Yeah, but look at them carve through the enemy legionnaires. Like, that is... Ooh, that is not a pretty sight. And with the fear effect, they're going to break these legionary cohort far before they're going to break. Yep, there they go, shattered. 20 more kills on them. Noble still in that fight, doing what they can. Actually carving into the Cappadocian, which is great as well. they can do some real damage to the Cappadocian, that would be big. Royal Cushite Archer is back. Here comes the Noble Horse. Ready to just... Yep. Charge, I'm assuming he has Javelins. No, he doesn't. Ooh! But... They force the volley into them, but a lot of... Yeah. Lusitani are not looking pretty. Should have moved the Noble Horse back when they were on the ground. Agima could have done it, but yeah. This is going to be the end of that unit. Sandwich between cavalry. Yeah. Unless they had a headhunt, they were not st there. They weren't staying in that fight any longer. And as such, that marks the end of Odrissan Kingdom and Lusitani. It is up to Rome and Nabatea to hold this inner keep for 20 minutes. <laughs> Such a disparity of numbers, like...
They're almost up to 300 kills. Holy shit. Luckily, this should hopefully break them, and they don't end up getting 300 kills. Yep, they break. Literally, it's Reckham's on this side. Desert Pikeman. The issue is, is this corridor is open. But it's a Reckham. Uh, two Desert Pikemen, an Armored Desert Hoplite, and a Legionary Cohort. Pretty much against the world. There is also, of course, a Legatus General. And if any of these defenses do break, which this one is wide open, it's probably over for us because they have the cavalry advantage still. Three units of cavalry that can do some real damage, including a very good shock cavalry unit. Now, a risky play here, that Armored Desert Hoplite is actually just chasing and I feel like they're going to get surrounded and uh, destroyed which is exactly what's about to happen yep charge into the back oh they're going to go Honestly, that was a mistake to go after the heavy archers. You should have stayed involved against those hoplites. Because uh, you would have crushed them either way. You want to make sure you you have to get back before the levy freedmen are there. Luckily, the Legatus were enough to force the Agimas back here. So the desert pikemen can get into position. If they couldn't... If that Legatus wasn't there to at least possibly hold up the Agimas, that probably would have been over. If we're able to hold here pretty well, they take a bit of a beating against those towers. And a bit of a charge out. Legionary Cohort moving on out. For a minute, now going back in. Armored Desert Hoplite engaging. I mean, that's why it was dangerous for him to move those out as well. Is those, yeah, those Cappadocians are doing amazing as well. Getting around the field, flitting around, doing what they need to. But infantry-wise, this is not looking amazing for the attackers. There's one, two real solid units of infantry. Most of it is just cavalry. There and there. I think that legionary cohort is going to engage these. Yep, there we go. So these guys are just sitting here. Palace guard holding that corridor. Look at that, that shield castle. <laughs> or shield screen, I should say. Not shield castle. Legionnaires, levies. So the healthy, le yeah. What they need to do is, uh. Yeah. The Gima's coming in now, and while well, the pikes are already in position with the pikes down, you're not going to be able to engage here. Which means we do have a very solid defense, which the weakest, funnily enough. Depending on what you're utilizing. If you're utilizing infantry, probably the... Probably the Legionnaires, but... Uh, or the Palace Guard, but you wanted to uh, full engage into this fight, I think. 
You want to commit towards the center, keep your cavalry around to force them to keep units away from the center fight. But otherwise, consolidate your forces, and I think without a consolidation of forces, these guys in the end are going to lose. But, am I wrong? And secondly, do they consolidate their forces even? Uh, yep, look at that. Nice little rails to the side. Able to do so. I think these archers still have ammo. One of the archers. Some of the archers do. Yeah, some of these archers actually do have ammo. That Levy Freeman should not have been forced into that fight. They're not going to win because of it. That's a fight that I don't even think the Reckhams are going <laughs> to feel. Yep, there's that engagement back, and now Ballista Crew to charge in, and those Ballista Crew are going to die now too. They're actually positioned at the perfect spot to not be hit by javelins from down below very effectively. But over here, the armored deserts are breaking 200 kills. Cohort are doing what they can. The issue with the desert pikemen, these cheap pikes, is... One, they're going to get shot. Two, they have very short pikes. And you're going to start to see it here. I mean, I'm not talking about the side engagement, but yeah, you can already see they're starting to file in. Because these are definitely shorter pikes. And you can see, yep, more and more infantry making their way in close. Those are pikes are still having a great fight there, but that's... Ugh. Hazardous for them, for sure. Legionary Cohort pulling back behind the pikes to the safety, and this is where it happens. Look at that. Just Legionnaires going on through. Look how close they're getting engaged into that fight. Almost the whole unit managed to get into this Desert Pikeman. So they're going to start losing a lot of their men. Palace Guard, of course, is holding out, fighting these Legionnaires now. Yep, those pikes break. 45 kills, which, to be fair, for the level of pikes they were, that's impressive. But now the center has lost its pike. The only pike left is on this corridor, and it cannot move. Uh, for fear of allowing the enemy in. He had the palace guard. Only lost nine men, so the legionnaires are losing more, especially with that tower providing support. The palace guard will eventually win. This hop like 212, yeah. Ranged firing, but I think that was the last of it. Nope, they still have ammo. The question is, can this Legionnaire cohort and Armored Desert Hoplite hold back what's left? Luckily, the weakened pike is coming back, but still...
not making an engagement out. The cohort, 136 of 130. So they're killing more than the Wrecking Palace Guard are saving. Yeah, they're losing a lot of men. Legatus. Yep. Of course, they have to scout out to see if they can get their Agima Cavalry through. Luckily, this is going really well. They've lost 20 men on this ride. Still lose more because there's so many arrow towers just hitting them down here. Artillery fire from Galatia. That could actually be big. I would utilize standard shot so it's a little more accurate. But hey. Yep. Pikeman being forced back again. Pretty much the half, last healthy Legionnaire is on its way out. And it is looking very good for the defenders, of course. The Pikes having to move their way over, do what they can to defend. As to be perfectly honest, with only 31 men, you might want to get the infantry away and see if you can get the Agima hit. Gima attempting to break through. Legatus going to stop him. Legatus, I mean, taking a few kills, but definitely giving back better than it's got. They managed to get a proper charge where the uh, Gimas didn't. So the Gimas lost their greatest asset that would have initially won them the fight. And with the Agima breaking, which is a huge, huge disaster there, that's a piece of mobility lost. We are looking a lot better. Yeah, Legatus does not need to get engaged in there. We do, can't afford to lose that. Still a full unit of Noble Cavalry, and a decent unit of Cappadocian. I mean, now that you know that quarter is broken, that's great. And something a little sneaky going on. Kushites managed to break down that, burn down that gate. And try to start sneaking behind. So engaged in the fight, we don't even notice this. Not in the slightest. And this Legatus looks like it's on its way out. Trying to stab a few boys. But hopefully it breaks all those Got Oh gosh. Point blank firing into those pikes. But he does luckily have these shields out. Here they come, coming back in division. Oh, Legatus actually doing really well. Pull him back in. Basically, these guys have to continue to hold. Especially with that cavalry trying to come in.
Honestly, if I were the the Elations, what I would have done is charged down this corridor. Done what I can to hit that way. While everything else was engaged, try to break through and support that Kushite Archer push. That point, I think, without a doubt, that would have won the defenders the game. Or not the defenders, the attackers the game. That push down the corridor, there we don't have anything to stop it. And of course our pikes would love to engage that cavalry up front like this. And we noticed. However, the enemy does control it at the moment. But with the last of the archers following, falling without any support to be able to be given to them, there's going to be no way for these guys to be able to break through. The noble horse can't break through with what they've got. I reckon we can start going back to defend here. Yeah. It's far too late to make any plays, and this is going to be a defender victory at this moment. So, let's enjoy the pikes, killing some stuff, and Kush still trying to be very sneaky. Getting behind the pikes, trying to cut them down. And actually doing a pretty good job. However, the Legatus will get in, pull over some of their own men, but finish off Kush. The finishing off of Kush, of course, that leaves just mercenary Syrians. This noble horse coming in way too late to be of any actual help. We're going to find that they do not have a uh, pleasant fight waiting for them. So this is initially going to be archers and beautiful. Yep. Gets into position, gets that shield screen. And cavalry counter tactics off. Wonderful job. Cavalry going to try to break through. But you don't want to break through with cavalry counter tactics. You're going to see how many of these guys are start dying. Yeah. Under 30 men before they break, and they just drop two more. And that is it. One minute left, because there's technically a ballista still alive. So, we'll speed up. Oh gosh. I guess we'll just go to two speed. 30 seconds. Counting down. And the defense was holed by an abatia and... Rome. Doing their jobs, doing a wonderful job of breaking them. Let's take a look at the army cops, eh? All right, Toaster Crumbs, Nabatea, 17, 49 kills, nice. 157 on that Reckon Palace Guard. At the end, I mean, he did a wonderful job. I think Nabatea did end up winning the game for us with the Noble Cavalry into a lot of those archers. A decent amount still had ammo. Not all of them did, but enough of them did that I think it helped us out significantly. And that's why I got 221 kills. <laughs> uh, Archer-wise, 134, 131. Great job there. Armor Deserts, 205, 262. I mean, the Desert Pike's not doing much, but being a deterrent. 145 for those Nabatean Axe Warriors. Me, doing shit. Uh, 128 for my uh, Thracia, second Thracian Noble. 123, 143 for those Bowmen. 124 for that slinger. So close. So close. And none of my Thracian warriors getting more than 100 kills, but carving into Oswarm. But wasn't enough. Same with uh, Lusitani doing a bit better. 
116 on its general. Holding up those archers, which I really appreciated, but not getting many kills with those Iberians. Uh, Blair, uh, Balearic Singers, 110, 171. 132 for that Lusitani Swordswoman. Veteran Shields, 133, 292, 132. Legio here with Rome, 142 on his Legatus General. Did a great job at breaking through the archers at the end. Doing a lot to help the pikes out. 217, 203, and 179 for those Syrians. Wonderful job all around. 109 for that Velitas. Getting into some actually pretty decent units as well when he was throwing those javelins. Estadi, 138, 208, 222, 129. And that Legionary Cohort, 343, 159. 184, 186, 109. And that Veteran Legionary, 120. Propane, the first of the defenders. We were scared of his O-Sworn, and there's a reason why. His first one got 252 kills with his general. Luckily managed to stop his artillery. Gallic Hunters, 120. Uh, Celtic Warriors, 117. Chosens, 142, 208, 139, 197, 178. All of them getting over 100 kills. And of course, all of his O-Sworn getting over 250 kills, with the lowest being at 251 kills, and that last one being at 443 kills. Monstrous work. Mr. Olive Tree here, with the most, uh, second most kills. Uh, Anor's just barely beat him. But Cappadocian Cav, 114, 126, 154, and 112 for those mercenaries. So close with that ballista. Galatian Legionnaires, 167, 335, 144, or 154, 171, 121, 176, 159. Galatian Swords, 154, 114, 179. His mainline infantry, and even most of his, outside of the two levy freemen, of course, got over 100 kills. Like, most of his army got over 100 kills. Uh, which is amazing. And then, of course, Enoris. <laughs> Bring this monstrous army. Uh, Royal Kushite Archers, 270. Kushite Archers, 126, 160, 189. Wonderful all round. Disciples of Epidmac, 234, 199, 307, 297, 168, 132, 198. Even the ones that got shot were monsters. Kushite Slaves, 125, 168. Uh, that's the reason why he has the most kills. And I think on the attackers, that army breaking through that side of where Rome was and where Lusitani and I were was big. His disciples doing that work was incredibly dangerous. Same with his archers, just dominating the, that fight. Honestly, he he won pretty much most of the engagements he was in. Uh then finally, Ghost King brings Seleucid. 137 for that Agima. Uh, Thorax, 118, 101, 154. Thoreos, 126, and 132. That is the army comps. Let me know what you think. What's the biggest win or loss? If you do ever get that far, let me know if you do, if you get to the end of this anyways. I don't even know how many people do. If no one responds, I assume, obviously, silence means consent. Uh, and it means all of you said yes. All right. See you all later. Bye for now.